Hall. Oh. Alderman Wilson. Uh, here. Alderman Holmes. Here. Alderman Tindum. Here. Alderman Grover. Here. Alderman Rainey. Here. Alderman Burris. Here. Alderman Fisk. Here. Alderman John Batiste. Alderman Wynn. Nine. We have a quorum. Welcome to the Monday, May 10th meeting of the Evanston City Council. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the Mayor Public Announcements. I would like to thank everyone who participated in Springfield Day. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone from the city who went, and particularly I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Larry Sufferton, his son Tom Sufferton, and Senator Jeff Schoenberg for doing a wonderful job of organizing the day for us. And on my thank you list would be uh, the following people who, representatives who did a wonderful job of speaking with us and answering questions. Representative Robin Gable, Senator Jackie Collins, Senator Dan Cronin, Representative Beth Coulson, Representative John Fritchie, Representative Lou Lang, Senator Christine Rodonio, Representative Mike Fortner, Senator Susan Garrett, Senator Mike Frerichs, Senator John Sullivan, Representative Sarah Feigenholtz, Representative Linda Chapalavia, Senator John Cullerton, Representative Dave Miller, who is from Evanston uh, originally and an ETHS grad, Secretary Gary Hainig, Secretary <coughs> Michelle Sadler, also an Evanstonian, Secretary Julie Hamos, also an Evanstonian, Secretary of State Jesse White, who graciously loaned us his office for the day, and uh, I would very much like to thank Joe McRae, Marty Lyons, and Eric Palmer uh, from the city staff for a wonderful job. And um, thank you to everyone from the school districts, from, the, from Evanston Hospital, from the Chamber of Commerce, and my favorite uh, people who call themselves just plain citizens who came, and uh, all the city staff and aldermen. Thank you all. Next, here you go, Rodney. I have several proclamations. National Preservation Month, May 2010. Whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for managing growth and sustainable development, revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride and maintaining community character while enhancing livability, and whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds. And whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as a people, and whereas old as the new green is the theme for National Preservation Month 2010, co-sponsored by the City of Evanston and the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Now therefore, I, Elizabeth Tisdall, Mayor of the City of Evanston, do hereby proclaim May 2010 as National Preservation Month in the City of Evanston and call upon the people of our city to join their fellow citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observance. Carlos? There he is. Thank you very much, Mayor. Carl, do you have to do it over here with the field? Okay. Oh. <laughs> I've got this all figured out. <laughs> National Public Works Week, May 16th through 22nd, 2010. Whereas public works services provided in our community are an int integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works systems and programs such as water, sewer, 
streets, highways, fleet maintenance, public buildings, solid waste, and recycling collection, and whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, construction, and maintenance, is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skills of public works employees, and whereas the motivation for efficiency of qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works and related departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform, and whereas this year marks the 50th anniversary of National Public Works Week. Now, therefore, I, Elizabeth Tisdall, Mayor of the City of Evanston, do hereby proclaim May 16th through 22nd, 2010, as National Public Works Week, and commend all city employees for delivering quality public service. All citizens are encouraged to recognize the accomplishments and contributions of public employees in providing responsive and effective government for Evanston. Suzette, our new Director of Public Works. The Evanston Street Branch YMCA Day, Emerson Street Branch YMCA Day, whereas the Emerson Street Branch YMCA was from 1909 to 1969 an anchor to the social and civic life of Evanston's African American community and whereas the Emerson Street Branch YMCA was brought into being by visionary leaders who were undaunted by the injustice and prejudice they faced. And whereas at a time when the Evanston African American community had only its homes, its churches, and its schools as places to gather freely and feel welcomed, the addition of the Emerson Y offered opportunities for the development of leadership, education, athletic prowess, and service that were treasured within the walls of the Emerson building and in the wider community. And whereas in this 125th anniversary year of the YMCA movement in Evanston, the community will gather in recognition of the men and women of the Emerson Y <coughs> with a celebratory gala event in their honor on May 22, 2010. Now therefore, I, Elizabeth B. Tisdall, Mayor of the City of Evanston, do hereby proclaim May 22, 2010, as Emerson Street Branch YMCA Day, and salute the trailblazers of the Emerson Y, and honor their unforgettable legacy that is still vibrant in the city of Evanston of today. Would the Y folk please come up?
Thank you. Um, I have one more proclamation that has been issued but will not be read, which is for Municipal Clerks Week. Um, and I forgot a very important part of Springfield Day was Northwestern University. I would certainly like to thank them. They provided the food that <laughs> kept us all going all day, and then they gave us an elegant party uh, that evening as well as coming to lobby with us, which was, I think, the most effective part of our lobbying venture, was that we could show that we were united, the university, the hospital, the school systems, the Chamber of Commerce, and the citizenry, and that while we may all disagree from time to time and argue our differing viewpoints, that we also are a powerful force when we all get together and are agreed on a major number of issues impacting our community. So I would definitely like to thank Northwestern. Um, next, city manager, we have public announcements and presentations. Yes, Madam Mayor, members of the council, good evening. I'd like to ask the mayor to join me uh, in making presentations to employees that are celebrating anniversaries uh, with the city of 25, 30, and 40 years. Members of the City Council, as uh, you probably are aware, uh, we have an annual program to recognize employees for their service in five-year increments. Uh, we've decided this year to alter that program a little bit uh, by bringing to the City Council those employees celebrating anniversaries uh, uh, in excess of uh, 25 years of service. Uh, we've also uh, created, uh, in honor of this occasion, a, uh, a jewelry pin. Bob, if I can maybe just have one to, to show. Um, to give to the employees in recognition of uh, their service. And so it's a gold pin um, with, what's the jewel? Ruby, sapphire, and cubic zirconia. So we will, I'm sorry? Uh, well, we'll work on the diamond, so. <laughs> Um, but we wanted to make sure that this was a special occasion uh, for those employees, and so we have, uh, have, have these pins made up. Um, our, our first employee, um, I'm not sure, Bob, if Mr. Todd has arrived. Yes. Um, uh, he's not arrived, but let's, uh, let's recognize Mr. James Todd uh, for 25 years of service uh, uh, to the forestry uh, division. He's a forestry crew leader, so we give a round of applause for James Todd. <laughs> Our, our next employee also is not able to be with us, and it's another 25 years of service, uh, Demetrius Cook, who's a deputy police chief. If we could give uh, uh, Chief Cook a round of applause. <laughs> but we do have with us from the police department, uh, Commander Jim Hutton. Commander Hutton. Commander Hutton joined uh, the Evanston Police Department on July 16, 1984. And uh, Commander, on behalf of the city, thank you for your service. Next is Mark Steinbuck. Mark is a uh, utilities uh, supervisor in our uh, sewer division, and uh, he is with us for uh, 30 years. His first day was July 16, 1979. Next is Wingard Suddeth from the Public Works Street and Sanitation Division. Come on up. <laughs> January 17, 1979. All right.
right, well, this was all prologue. Um, Glenn Sanders, would you please come up? Glenn is with the Public Works Department, Streets and Sanitation and Equipment Operator 2. Started with the city on June 23rd, 1969. Wow. Celebrating 40 years of service to the residents of the city of Edmonton. Thanks a lot, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, City of Evanston is a great place to work. Very nice people. Uh, we try to put our best foot forward. Keep our head to the sky. Thank you. Uh, several others who also could not be here with us this evening, but I'd like to recognize them. Uh, at 35 years of service, Linda Tenkler from the police department. At 35 years of service, Kurt Kempel from the police department. Uh, 30 years of service, Walter Baumgart from the police department. Uh, 30 years of service, uh, Ronaldo Rabalar from the police department. Uh, 30 years of service from the fire department, David Ellis. 30 years of service from the fire department, Michael Meyer. Uh, from the Administrative Services Department, 30 years, uh, Ronald Britt, uh, Laura Hirschfeld, 30 years in the library, Michael Erlenbrock, uh, 30 years uh, in the library, and then additional 25-year recipients, Jeffrey DeVore from the Police Department, Michael McDonald from the uh, uh, Fire Department, Peter Casey from the Fire Department, and uh, Jeffrey Bogzak from the uh, Public Works Traffic Signs and Street Lights Division. So let's all give them a round of applause for their <laughs> Next, Madam Mayor, um, as you and the council know, uh, over the last several months, the state of Illinois has had several changes uh, in its uh, Freedom of Information Act laws, uh, as well as uh, uh, some changes to the Illinois Open Meetings Act. Uh, Grant for our city attorney is here this evening and is going to give just a brief overview of, uh, of, those, uh, of those points, and certainly we'd be happy to come back at a future meeting with additional, additional information. So with that, Mr. Furr. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the Council, and City Manager. As you're aware, the Open Meetings Act and the Freedom of Information Act were substantively amended last year. Those amendments took effect on January 1st, 2010. I have just a very brief presentation um, with respect to an overview of some of the key changes. The most significant new amendment to the law is a addition of language to Section 1, which provides that records strike that, that providing records in compliance with the requirements of this act is a primary duty of public bodies, fiscal obligations notwithstanding. In simple English, what that means is uh, the duty of transparency and open government has been determined by the Illinois State Legislature to be an overriding concern and an overriding concern that demands action by all municipal governments. I'm pleased to report that the city of Evanston has been working since day one of uh, this calendar year with respect to complying with this new obligation and this new standard. I'm also pleased to report that the city clerk's office has offered invaluable assistance and has done great work in terms of ensuring compliance and working with the legal department and all departments in the city to make sure that all, all uh, requirements of the act and specifically this new language is being honored and complied with on a daily basis. 
Another uh, feature of the act is the creation of a Freedom of Information Act officer. There are officers appointed by the city of Evanston. They are uh, Clerk Green and Deputy Clerk Otwell and also myself. The duties of these officers are to um, ensure timely response to all Freedom of Information Act requests and just as importantly to maintain good records. Um, maintaining good records and ensuring a quick turnaround means that everybody must be organized and again the law department and the clerk's office have been working with each of the departments in the city to maintain accurate information to maintain a log of response times and to ensure that compliance is met and achieved other changes uh, to the act include the fact that uh, copy charges the first pa 50 pages are free it is then uh, a charge may be assessed of 15 cents per page after the first 50 pages are produced and another uh, important clarification is that there cannot be any charge for personnel cost uh, simply put there is no charges permitted for the uh, the cost of personnel to be devoted to timely responding to a FOIA request more changes uh, there's some were uh, some important clarifications in new language put into the statute private information has a definition um, it also speaks to personal information and again with a new law you may see issues that crop up in implementation. Um, public funding, section uh, 2.5 is new. Simply put it states that anything having to do with the receipt, use or obligation of public funds by the city of Evanston is producible. Also uh, with respect to litigation, settlement agreements are public records and must be produced uh, there that, that uh, may be subject to redaction as, as needed and as necessary, but only in compliance with other parts of the Act. Another uh, big change in the Act provides that commercial requests, where a person who makes a request and discloses it that is for commercial purposes, not personal purposes, that um, request must be honored and must be responded to. That's a major change from uh, the prior statute, which permitted that permission commercial requests did not have to be responded to. So that's a major change. And we've already touch, touched upon copy charges. When we get into the issue of uh, private information, this is a subject that is uh, of ongoing dialogue between all municipalities and the Attorney General's Office. Uh, the Attorney General's Office is, of course, tasked with overseeing, implementing, and enforcing the Freedom of Information Act and the dialogue relative to what constitutes private information as you might suspect, um, is, is an ongoing uh, issue. And I can say that I've had uh, a number of conversations with the Illinois Attorney General's Office as well as similarly situated municipal attorneys. Uh, one of the main things, and it's highlighted in this definition, is personal email addresses and whether those are disclosable pursuant to a request. That's a very important issue that's getting definition as we go along during the implementation of this act. Uh, Oftentimes, we'll have repeat requests. A uh, requester will repeat a request for records or may couch it, um, essentially asking for the same records but, but using uh, alternate language. There's a provision in here that says that while requests uh, from repeating, repeating re re say that fast, repeat requesters must be complied with, there's also an issue if they're unduly burdensome where the uh, public body can still ask for that requester to narrow the request and otherwise work with the requester to, to make it a manageable request for records. As I've already highlighted, a commercial request, um, generally these uh, permit 21 days to respond, although as you might imagine, some of the commercial requests that we might see on a day-to-day -day basis uh, may uh, ask for a very high volume of records. This permits us to contact the requester and comply within a reasonable time that uh, may be agreed upon between ourselves and the requester. And I'm pleased to report that when we've had these commercial requests come into the city in the last couple of months that we've been able to, to work very well with the requesters and so we're uh, certainly complying with the law. Uh, there's some ambiguities in the law and really that's, that's, these are subjects that, that develop uh, over time as we implement the law and really see how the language uh, works on a day-to-day -day basis. It's really something that um, is outside the scope of this presentation, 
but um, there are some ambiguities in the law. Again, um, we are getting guidance from the Illinois Attorney General as they implement and issue rules and, and letters uh, setting forth their interpretations of the act, and that's assisting the city on a day-to-day -day basis. In terms of um, penalties, there are penalties that may be imposed for noncompliance. Um, the city of Evanston has not had occasion to go down this road because we are working diligently to comply with the law and also dialogue with the Illinois Attorney General on a day-to-day -day basis as needed. Um, one, one key provision is the creation of the public access counselor in the Illinois Attorney General's office. They're generally on the front line and work with us um, relative to uh, resolving any issues or um, addressing any concerns relative to uh, responding to a request. That public access counselor also acts to enforce the provisions of the Open Meetings Act, which of course the city of Evanston is obligated to comply with as well. So of course this is an extremely broad brush overview. Um, it's a 26 page act, but I'm pleased to report again and reiterate that the city of Evanston is continuing to work on a day, daily basis to ensure compliance. Um, I'm in touch with Clerk Green. Uh, as needed and we continue to work with all departments relative to training and working through and making sure that we do the absolute best we can and comply with the law in all aspects. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Farrar. Uh, is it your impression that we have enough uh, personnel, trained personnel to respond to the FOIA request that we get to at handle this administrative part of it? At this point, yes, and I would certainly defer to Mr. Green if he would have any further comments on that, but I am, I'm happy to say, and I, and I must say, um, in January when we started thinking about all the different uh, avenues that this act presented to the city, if there was going to be a staffing issue and a logistical issue, um, at this point, I suppose I should uh, cross my fingers for, for good luck and continued good luck. Uh, we have not had any problems along that line. But it's something that we are continually evaluating as, as we go along to make sure that, that we do have enough resources to make sure that we comply with it. Are we getting a lot of requests under FOIA? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, we are. Can you give me a general idea of how many a week? Uh, I would have to defer to Clerk Green on that. On a weekly basis, uh, so far we're getting about 30, 30 a week. Uh, sometimes more depends on um, what the request we're getting. We get a request through email, faxes, walk-ins, and mail-ins. So um, that's where we stand right now. And we're understaffed. Yep. Mr. Farrar, are there requests that come in as FOIA requests that really don't need to be a FOIA request that we can then say to the person, do you have access to a computer? You can look up the minutes from the city council meeting on the website. Well, the law, the Freedom of Information Act is quite explicit in that we cannot have any dialogue with a requester we cannot seek any clarification we have to treat everything and if there's a if there's a even a, a a shadow of a doubt we must default and treat it as a FOIA request to ensure that we're fully compliant again tying back into the goal of the act which is explicit that responding to Freedom of Information Act requests is a primary duty of the public body so we do go to the default to ensure compliance with the law does um does the state legislature have to comply with the same law that we do? Oh, the, there's there's exceptions, I believe, for uh, the Illinois General Assembly. And I, as I stand here tonight, I, I don't recall all the different ones. But it's a little different, yes, for them. Yeah, of course. They make the laws for us. And then yes, uh, City Attorney. It seems that in the personal information category, the restrictions are just not ap applicable across the board because information that may be requested about us, you know, home address, you know, email address, phone numbers, all kinds of stuff is just available and would be turned over. Um, but for a police officer, it may be treated differently. So how do you... Uh, see approaching that kind of information. There are uh, there is a specific exception f uh, for public safety and security, and one of those exceptions um, speaks to 
the identity of police officers and certain personal information relative to them in the discharge of their public safety duties. There was an exception made by the legislature um, and there was some dialogue and I believe that there's been some case law, prior case law that interpreted that issue. So uh, yes, with public safety, um, there is a different approach taken by the law. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Farrakh. Yeah. And Madam Mayor, one final uh, presentation, and that is uh, Suzette Robinson, our Director of Public Works, uh, with reminders regarding Memorial Day uh, trash removal schedule. Good evening, Mayor Alderman and City Manager. I'm Suzette Robinson, the Public Works Director. Um, before I make mention of the, the, the holiday uh, trash schedule, I asked um, Mr. Sanders to, to stand by for just a second because um, I wanted to share uh, some information with you. If you remember earlier uh, when I did my sanitation presentation and I showed you how some of the debris is set out, um, Speedy, as we affectionately call him, is the special pickup driver. All of that debris you see, he makes sure that it all goes away and and it goes away in such a manner that he rakes, we, it, the alley is much cleaner than it was before. And he gets, he has a fan club out there. There are residents that call in. There are residents that write in um, glowing compliments about the work that he does. So I want you to know that he's going to leave us. He's going to retire. And... Streets and sanitation, we're definitely going to miss him. So he's a value, 40 years, no sick days for the last 30 years. Fantastic employee. Okay. Okay, now on to the holiday schedule. <laughs> um, um, May 31st is Memorial Day, as you all know, and we will not have trash collection or recycling all um, services for that week will move back one day. So, and that's really all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that concludes our report. Uh, City Clerk, do you have communications? Yes, just one, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm piggybacking on the foyer uh, presentation by uh, uh, Attorney Grant Farrar. Um, those who have not received information yet, because of the um, many FOIA requests that have been coming into the office and the shortage, shortage of staff, the clerk's office, as of today, started closing for one hour from 1 to 2, uh, Monday through Friday, for the rest of the time until further notice is made so that this clerk's office can continue to give the, the superior customer service that we've been given uh, and that we can stay on top of everything. So for those who don't know, uh, today was the first day of the one-hour closing, and uh, that will remain until further notice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is citizen comment. I'm sure we have citizens signed up, but I don't have the sheets. Could someone bring them up here? <coughs> Nobody has signed up? Is there no one here? This is Evanston. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Alderman Rainey, could we have the consent agenda? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first item on our agenda tonight is approval of the minutes of the regular council meeting of April 26, 2010. Administration and Public Works Committee requests council approval of the payroll through April 25 in the amount of $2,209,204.54. We also request your approval of the Evanston bills through May 11 in the amount of $1,897,207.17.
Uh, the first purchase we have is approval of a contract for the Lorraine H. Morton Civic Center roof replacement in the amount of a million seven hundred thousand um, dollars. No, in the amount of one million four hundred seventy-eight thousand five hundred and eighty dollars. The award goes to G. G. A. Johnson and Sons and Evanston Firm. Next is approval of a contract for engineering services for the 1964 filter addition rehabilitation project at the water department. This, this award goes to CDM in the <coughs> amount of $301,352. Then we have approval of the contract we're requesting for 2010 water main replacement and street resurfacing in the amount of $2,482,739. And this award is to, um, let's see, this award is to, why can't I see this? Um, I'm sorry, A Lamp Concrete, I'm blocking on their name, I know. Um, A Lamp <laughs> Concrete Contractors um, in Schomburg. Next is approval of a purchase of automotive oils, antifreeze, and lubricants. Um, in part to uh, bulk products to Keller Hart Oil Company in the amount of $28,525 and package products to Palm Petroleum in the amount of $13,483.50 for a total of $42,008.50. Next, we have the purchase of several vehicles and equipment uh, that we'd like you to approve in the amount of $434,000. $359 for various divisions of the department. Purchases include a street sweeper, a chipper, and five trucks from three different vendors. Funding is provided by uh, Fleet Service Capital Outlay. Next, approval of Harley Davidson lease agreement for the Evanston Police Department for seven uh, motorcycles, and that goes to Chicago Harley Davidson in Glenview in the amount of $19,740. This is for June 1, 2010 through May 30th, 2011. We ask your approval also of the second year optional renewal of contract with CPS car, uh, parking for the Maple Avenue, Sherman Plaza, and Church Street garages. Um, this is in the amount of $1,900,000 $77,827. It is a not to exceed amount and the funding is from the parking fund. Next, we have approval of the police 911 center HVAC replacement project. Um, this is a request to approve a letter of intent to Temperature Equipment Co Corporation so that they can begin the project of building a carrier HVAC um, system for the center. This is in the amount of $12,951. Next, we have approval of a contract for bond council. Um, count, uh, our staff and the committee is requesting the hiring of the law firm of Chaplin, uh, Chapman and Cutler, LLP, as bond council representative representation for the issuance of any and all city debt over the next three year period. The actual amount spent on the services will depend on the size of the issuance during the year. The total amount available is $200,000. Um, next, we request your approval of contract for a financial advisor. Uh, we're recommending uh, hiring the firm of Public Financial Management, PFM, and their partner, a women-owned firm, Kathy Thomas Consulting, minority and women-owned firm, uh, Kathy Thomas Consulting LLC under a similar three-year agreement uh, from May to, um, let's see, from, let's see, for the next year beginning in May um, through 2011. And this is the same amount, the 200,000, which will be drawn down depending on uh, the sales. Next is approval of a contract for legislative <laughs> advocacy service. Would Holland you remove that, please, Alderman Rainey? Hold, hold this. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'll renew that. Um, next item is for introduction. I, we're hold. Uh, we're going. To, the committee chair will address the advocacy oh, service. Um, next item is 22010, which is an ordinance for introduction. 
and that is to amend the city code to establish a three-way stop at Lincoln Street and Asbury Avenues. Next for introduction is Ordinance 28010, <coughs> decreasing the number of Class B1 liquor licenses from six to five due to the closure of the 1800 Club at 1800 Sherman Avenue. Next is for introduction, Ordinance 30010, which increases the number of Class C liquor licenses to permit issuance to Little Walk 2. And a seven is introduction of ordinance 31010, which decreases the number of Class C liquor licenses from 25 to 24 due to the closure of Va Pensiero. Next is ordinance 32010, is for in introduction also, which amends section 356 of the city code classification and license fees having to do with a Class AC liquor license allowing alcoholic beverages to be served at art, cinema, special events, consumption in the cafe area, and in only the viewing auditorium for the special event. Um, planning and development. The first item is being held in committee and will be addressed by the committee chair. The second item is off the agenda and will be addressed by the committee chair. P3 is approval of Sidewalk Cafe for Donatella Mediterranean Bistro at uh, 1512 Sherman Avenue. Next item is off the agenda and will be addressed by the committee chair. Item P5 is for introduction, which grants a special use permit for a type two restaurant at 1115 Emerson Street in the C2 commercial district known as Wings Over Evanston. Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna introduce oh, it and you can do that. Um, Next item is for action, which is 27010, which amends portions of the city code and amends portions of ordinance 133008 uh, related to records and zoning board of appeals and plan commission meetings and fees for certain applications in the zoning board of appeal. Human Services Committee. We have the Township of Evanston bills for April 2010, the monthly bills for action. Then there are no other committee reports under appointments uh, recommending for appointment to the Civil Service Commission, Nicholas A. Belandic and Fred Tannenbaum and the Environment Board, Hugh Bartman. With that, Madam Mayor, I move approval of the consent agenda. Thank you. City Clerk, could you call the roll? Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tindum. Aye. Adam Grover, Aye. Adam Rainey, Aye. Adam Burris, Aye. Adam Fisk, Aye. Adam John Patisse, Aye. Adam Wynn. Nine. Nine to nothing. The consent agenda is passed. Alderman Jean Baptiste, could we have the report from Administration and Public Works? Advocacy Services, the term of May 1st, 2010, February 29th, 2012. And the cost of this agreement is $65,000 for the first year, $95,000 for the second year. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Alderman Fisk. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I am recusing myself from this vote. My son works for Holland and Knight, and although I don't believe that there is a conflict, I want to avoid any uh, appearance of a conflict. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further lights, City Clerk, could we have a roll call vote? Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Holmes? Aye. Alderman Tindum? Aye. Alderman Grover? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Alderman Burris? Aye. Alderman Fisk? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alderman John Batiste? Aye. Alderman Wynn? Eight to nothing, the motion passes. Alderman Jean Baptiste, do you have? That's it. Thank you. Alderman Rainey, Planning and Development. Yes, Madam Mayor, we didn't do too good tonight. Um, first item is uh, approval of the FY 2010 2011 emergency shelter grant recommendations. Um, Madam Mayor and members of the council, the committee had um, a series of questions and um, need more information regarding that. And we were assured there was no deadline and therefore we're holding it in committee for additional information. Next, uh, approval of families in transition funding allocation. Um, 
the committee, I, I want to move approval of an amended recommendation, and that is a continuation of the current family that uh, families in transition uh, or that uh, Connections for the Homeless is currently sponsoring and holding off on the second family that they presented this evening um, because we're researching the opportunity to use other funds for the second family. Second. Um, and then also, just let me comment that staff is coming back to us with a full um, explanation and recommendations for going forward with this program. All right, it's been moved and seconded as amended. City Clerk? Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Holmes? Aye. Alderman Tindum? Aye. Alderman Grover? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Alderman Burris? Aye. Alderman Fisk? Aye. Alderman John Patisse? Aye. Alderman Wynn? <coughs> Nine to zero. Nine to nothing. The motion passes. Alderman Rainey? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, next item is P4, which is for action tonight, and that is a recommendation of Planning and Development Committee to approve the Sidewalk Cafe for Las Palmas at 817 University Place with an amendment um, that recommends the same conditions as provided for by last year's um, approved Sidewalk Cafe. And I just want to comment on that if the I, I second. It's been moved and seconded. Alderman Rainey? Yes. Um, Alderman John Baptiste, Alderman Wynn, um, and I as well agree that this, there are certain issues with this uh, sidewalk cafe. And one of the recommendations that we are, or one of the, the requirements we're placing on this is that the manager and owner of Las Palmas meet with the bank, the adjacent bank, to secure additional parking so that the, the sidewalk cafe can conceivably be relocated as Alderman um, Fisk would like to the west side of the, um, the facility, the current facility. We're not requiring it for this year, but in October, we need that letter. And so we want to attach that requirement to this special use. Second. Alderman Fisk. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you to the committee for your consideration. Um, I wanted to uh, just draw your attention to the fact that we have had uh, a trial period for Las Palmas uh, for the past, at, uh, the end of last year. And there were some problems related to that, which caused us to meet with city staff, uh, who in turn met with the, um, the manager of Las Palmas to investigate uh, the possibility of moving the sidewalk cafe to the west side of the building. The benefit to that, of course, would be that the, um, there might be more tables at that location. We also worked uh, on various design alternatives, as well as how to relocate the parking to um, make, uh, make it possible that there wouldn't be a decrease in the number of parking places. We talked about valet parking. We talked about the bank parking. We've talked about uh, you know, various other things, but did not pursue them because we did not have the, um, the support at that time of the uh, manager of the restaurant. We very much want this restaurant to, to work, but we also want, because it, it is in such close proximity to the neighbors, really eight feet away from the, the, from the na first neighboring um, apartment, um, that we want this to work for everyone. So um, I appreciate your help on this. I want to make sure that this is something that is going to come back to the council at the end of this season, and that also the number of tables is limited to three, and the maximum number of people per table is four, which is, I believe, what they had outlined in Spark, but I'm not sure it was it was mentioned in the materials that were in front of us. Uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Alderman um, Mayor. What we approved in committee was we approved the previous authorization um, for the special use for the outdoor cafe. So if that was in there. Um, so that's what we approved. And also, I would, I would like to be specific regarding the, the communication with the bank and the response, and that is the second meeting in October. We should require that letter. Thank you. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the sidewalk cafe as amended. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Um, Madam Mayor, I yield to Alderman Holmes for things over. Evan. Wings over Evanston, a new restaurant to be um, at 1115 uh, Emerson. We'd like to, um, it's been introduced. We'd like to move to uh, suspend the rules. We'd like to get okay. the, okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Um, you want to move approval? I would like to move approval. We have to vote. Oh, you have to vote. I'm sorry. City clerk. Go ahead. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tindum. Aye. Alderman Grover. Aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye. Alderman Burris. Aye. Alderman Fisk. Aye. Alderman Jopatis. Yes. Alderman Wynn. Aye. Aye. Uh, then I'd like to move Nine approval. to nothing. The rules are suspended. Go ahead, Alderman Holmes. Then I'd like to move approval of Wings over Chicago operating in Evanston as Wings over Evanston. Second. Okay. Much improved name. <laughs> City Clerk. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tindum. You fall? Oh, sorry. Alderman Grover. Aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye. Alderman Burris. Aye. Alderman Fisk. Aye. Alderman John Batiste. Aye. Alderman Wynn. Aye. Nine. Nine to nothing. The motion passes. Uh, all right. Does that conclude your report, Alderman Rainey? Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Alderman Holmes, do you have anything from Human Services? No report. All right, call of the wards. Alderman Wilson. I'd just like to invite everyone to join the uh, YEA festival is this Saturday, May 15th from, I think it's 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Great event, lots of, uh, lots of fun activities for kids and adults alike. So make sure you take a stop by uh, Chicago and Dempster on Saturday, thanks. Thank you, Alderman Holmes. I'd first like to congratulate the mayor on her first town hall meeting last Thursday. Well attended, very good meeting. And I'd also like to thank publicly Alderman Grover for uh, filling in for me at Evanston Township High School on Friday for the visit from students from Orr High School. And I appreciate that, <laughs> Orr Academy, I should say. Um, then, um, uh, I attended the EYI um, conference at uh, Fleetwood Jardim on Saturday before last, and I would just like to say that it was very um, enlightening to have Phil Jackson from the Black Star Project. I'm sure some of you have heard of him. Um, excellent speaker, and it was a wonderful uh, exchange and a, um, a panel with youth. Um, about some of the issues that they're concerned about, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to follow up with some of that at the Youth Summit, which will be coming up next week. Um, and last, I'd like to uh, invite everyone, if you haven't got a ticket to the Emerson Street Y uh, recognition on May 22nd, please do so, because it's going to be a wonderful event. Um, and last but not least, um, to express my sympathies to the loss of another member of the Jordan family. The eldest son, Edwin Jordan Jr., passed away this uh, past uh, weekend, so we'd like to express our sympathy to that family. Thank you. Alderman Tendum? No report, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Alderman Grover? Thank you, Madam Mayor. First, I want to offer congratulations to uh, the Emerson YMCA for its 125th anniversary. One, it's a great Evanston institution, one of several that have been lost to this community. So it's wonderful that we can celebrate 125 years later. And it looks like I've got a date. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Burris, because those tickets are hard to come by now. Yeah. Um, and thank you to our long, loyal employees of the city. I am grateful to all of you for your long service. And, um, and that kind of loyalty doesn't happen so much these days. And finally, a ward meeting next Thursday for the seventh ward, although anyone is invited to join us from 7 until 8.30 at the Evanston Ecology Center. For those of you who did respond to the census, there will be cookies. <laughs> Uh, and our celebrity lineup includes um, Suzette Robinson to talk about street sweeping and sanitation, 
our problem solving officer from the Evanston Police Department, and Nate Kipnitz, who will uh, make a presentation about wind farms to interested Seventh Ward residents. So please join us. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Rainey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like a follow up from our staff regarding a meeting regarding um, a township committee. Did we not talk about having oh, no. a township committee? Um, second of all, I'd like to make a reference, because there is no township committee yet, to the Human Services Committee regarding a full discussion on the emergency services and housing and food and utility program provided by um, the township. I'm not sure I understand how that works, what the parameters are, or... Um, how a person can qualify. However, I will say to TV Land that currently, evidently, uh, based on the bills list, mortgage money is being given to people in need. So if you're in need of mortgage money, head over to the township at Maine and Dodge because they're helping people pay their mortgage. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rainey. Alderman Burris? No report. Thank you. Um, Alderman Fisk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, just wanted to announce that the next First Ward meeting will be held Tuesday, June 1st at the Evanston Public, not next Tuesday, but Tuesday, June 1st, at the Evanston Public Library from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, we'll post an agenda on the Ward website at evanstonfirstward.org, and we encourage everyone to check the website regularly for um, updates. Um, I heard from a constituent today that apparently HB 43 has passed the Illinois Senate and it now goes to the governor's desk for signature. It's the law that requires a motorist to stop for pedestrians in a crosswalk rather than just yielding. Um, finally, I would like to express my sympathy to Martha Rudy on the passing of her mother Doris. Uh, Doris is a longtime resident of the First Ward. She came to Ohio with her husband John in 1962. An architect by trade, John Rudy, was um, later served as alderman of the First Ward uh, prior to his death. Uh, Doris taught uh, full-time in the speech arts department at Evanston Township High School from 1962 to 67, and until 1979, she taught adults in the ETHS evening school. In 1979, Doris graduated from Garrett Evangelical the Theological Seminary, for which she later was to work. Uh, Doris served on the board of directors of the Evanston Day Nursery, was involved in politics, and for many years worked for progressive candidates. She was on the first committee to explore bringing First Night to Evanston and served on the First Night Evanston Board of Directors for all of the organization's 50 years. An energetic participant in community affairs for more than 40 years, Doris's enthusiasm, work ethic, and devotion to our community will certainly be missed. Her memorial service is scheduled for Saturday, May 15th at 10.30 a.m. at the First United Methodist Church of Evanston. Thank you. Alderman Jean-Baptiste. In the continuing pursuit of um, sagging pants issues, um, a constituent um, sent me an email, and she uh, referred to a study that is uh, being done um, by a particular physician, and um, he indicated that uh, this physician specializes in hip reconstruction surgeries, and he did a clinical study specifically on young men who have been habitually sagging or wearing their pants in this way. Uh, he found that after 10 to 15, 10 or 15 years of sagging, an ab abnormally high percentage of men require surgeries on their hips, wearing their pants in this manner has so changed their gait and habitual, habitual way of standing and walking, they needed to have reconstructive surgery on their hips. So if your children are sagging, you know, advise them properly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman <laughs> Shaw Baptiste. Alderman Wynn. I, I think that was wise. Um, Alderman Wilson. Pursuant to five Illinois compiled statutes, 120 slash 2A, I move that the City Council convene into executive session to discuss agenda items regarding personnel, collective bargaining, litigation, and minutes. These agenda items are permitted subjects to be considered in executive session and are enumerated exceptions under the Open Meetings Act. These exceptions are 5 ILCS 120-2, 2, 
A, subsection C1, C2, C11, and C21. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Holmes? Aye. Alderman Tindum? Aye. Alderman Grover? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Alderman Burris? Aye. Alderman Fisk? Aye. Alderman John Batiste? Aye. Alderman Wynn? Twice you've done it tonight.